in the open noonday. They calls us a pack of beggars. A Charleston gentry in their fine linens. And who were your ancestors a few years back? The British armed these backwoods loyalists and put them into positions of power. The loyalists seized the opportunity to settle old scores. British soldiers are soon horrified by the actions of their southern allies. We approach the farm and we see pastures littered with the carcasses of dead cattle and horses. We walk into the plantation house, but everything is silent. On the floor are the smashed fragments of porcelain figurines which had been collected by the owner. On the shelf in their stead, we see five severed human heads. And then, are the barbarians. There lay a pregnant woman murdered in her bed. They had cut open each of her breasts with stabs from their bayonets. And above the canopy they wrote in her own blood, Thou shalt never give birth to a rebel. Patriots fight back. They form partisan bands, burning farms, torturing and killing suspected Tories. Friend and foe alike were often pillaged and indiscriminately, indiscriminately, people who had publicly declared their neutrality were pillaged by both sides. All sides were involved and all sides were guilty of the cruelest barbarities against one another. I come home after six months of hunting Tories and there is the wreckage of our farm and I find mother. They tied her up and whipped her. She's a widow, but they stole everything they could and burned the house. I join up with another company, and we go to the house of a Tory named Campbell. And we capture a few of them. We shoot a fellow named McPherson, and Campbell was spigoted. It works like this. First, we hammer a sharp pin through a block of wood. And then, it was Tom Archer. He got hold of Campbell and he pushed his foot on the spike. And then he turns him round and round till the pin runs clear through his foot. Cruel, you think? I loved seeing Campbell speak at it. We figured he was part of the gang that horsewhipped a helpless widow. What had she ever done except telling her son to be true to the cause? The British strategy of using loyalists to pacify the South is proving to be disastrous. Cornwallis is frustrated and perplexed. If the loyalists allow themselves to be plundered and their own families ruined by these rebel bandits, how do they expect us to protect them? In 1780, George Washington is with the main American forces outside of New York, locked in a stalemate with the British Army stationed in the city. He and his soldiers have suffered two devastating winters at Valley Forge and Morristown. His thoughts turn to his beloved Mount Vernon, which he hasn't seen in six years. He writes to his cousin managing the estate. I wait here with impatient anxiety for news from the South. I can do nothing. Do you have any prospects of getting paint? I trust you have taken care of the fallen trees and the hedges. How many lambs do you have this spring? Write me how many horses I now own. Mrs. Washington tells me that she's taken a fancy to a horse belonging to James Cleveland. If he is as fine a horse as is claimed, try to get him. I shall be very pleased if you do. 1780 was a, a low point because both militarily and politically, things look bad. There's no money. States are, are broke and the, the army is in terrible condition, uh, not being supported. So I think you have a lot of uh, 
of disillusionment and uh, real uh, feeling that maybe we've made a terrible mistake. I think there was that, in that sense, psychologically, it was a low point as well. At this moment, Washington and the country get devastating news. General Benedict Arnold, Washington's most brilliant general and one of the revolution's greatest heroes, has become convinced that the Americans are losing the war. He has gone over to the British. Arnold was an incredible figure in the minds of the Americans. This was not just a general that led an army. This was one who had accomplished incredible feats at Fort Ty, in front of Quebec, at Valcour Island, at Saratoga. And it was an incredible blow on the Americans' belief in themselves. 